following movie will create a thermal analysis, take the results of the thermal solution, and map those temperatures onto a structural model and run a structural analysis. We'll begin creating our thermal simulation. And here, since we're creating a, a thermal solution, we'll use a coarse mesh of four noted tetrahedrons. Next, we'll apply our material properties. Here, we'll select a material out of the library. Now we'll assign our thermal constraints. Here we'll put a fixed temperature on the bottom faces of our model. And we'll also put a different fixed temperature on the top. All right, now we're ready to solve. Just click to OK for the solve. And it just takes a few seconds to run. <clears throat> you can see what it's completed. And we'll review our thermal results. So you can see the temperatures. And what we'd like to do is write these temperatures out to a file. So I'll go ahead and pick the entire model to inspect the results. And then we can either write it out to a spreadsheet or to a, a file. <clears throat> We'd like to write that out to a CSV file. We'll use a comma for a delimiter. And here we'll give the file a name. And we don't care about node ID. We're just after X, Y, Z and temperature. All right, now that we've written out that file, we could map these temperatures onto our mesh that we have existing. However, the mesh is too coarse for our structural solution. So what we'll do instead is we'll create a new, uh, new simulation files in the Nastrian structural environment. So here, instead of a four-noted tetrahedron, we'll, we'll create a TET-10, and we'll also create a smaller global element size for a finer mesh. We'll also ensure we get two elements through the thickness. All right, then we'll, as we did last time, assign a material. We'll pick one out of the library. All right, next we'll assign a structural constraint. We'll go ahead and fix the model on one of the faces. And then we'll map our temperatures as a, a temperature load. 
Here we have a number of different types of temperature loads we can create. If we had a node ID table, we could use that. Um, but since we have a different mesh, that doesn't apply. <clears throat> Neither does uh, temperature time on a sign. So we'll just pick the, uh, the first temperature and we'll create a field for the load application. <clears throat> and we'd like to make the independent domain Cartesian, so we'll end up with X, Y, and Z, as well as temperature, which was the same format that we wrote out our temperatures from our thermal analysis. So here you can see those temperatures. And next we need to select uh, an interpolator for how we would like to map those temperatures onto our model. And we'll pick the default, which is Delaunay. And then we'll select the body that we'd like to map these temperatures onto. So we're not mapping it onto the mesh. <clears throat> we're mapping it onto the body. So if the mesh were to change, the mapping would update. All right, next we need to create our, um, our temperature sets. So we'll do that. Here's where we assign a default temperature. And then we also need to assign an initial stress-free temperature to the model. Now that we've done that, we can bring that temperature into our temperature load set. And we can also see how um, the temperatures will be mapped onto our mesh. All right, that looks good. So we're ready to solve. All right, and that run took about three seconds. Then we can view our structural results. Here you can see our displacements. And we can also view stress. And that concludes the demonstration.